Hi, I'm Sorrel, Plant Spirit Medicine Woman, and today I want to talk to you about ancestors and how to create an altar for your ancestors. Ancestor altars are a wonderful way for us to connect with our roots, with our lineage, and with the wisdom of those who have passed away before us. It helps us to reconnect with the people that we've loved, the people that we've admired, that have already gone and that we can't communicate with anymore in real life. So I'm going to begin by guiding you through some basic steps of how we can create the altar and then we're going to make an altar together. So the first step is to select your space. You might like to create a permanent altar for your ancestors or you might like to create one for a specific celebration. So choose your space. I'm going to be setting my space up right here with you today and I've got a lovely big space but it could be as small as a little cupboard, it could be a shelf, it could be a mantelpiece, however is going to work for you. There are no rules really, just choose the space. The next thing we want to do is to gather meaningful items that represent our ancestors that are personal to our unique connection to our ancestors. And so these sorts of items might be photographs, if you have photographs of your ancestors. They could be candles to illuminate the connection to our ancestors in the spiritual realm, to call in the love and the light of our ancestors. Uh, incense to purify the energy of the space as we're invoking our ancestors into a beautiful altar space creating some peaceful vibes and offerings as well. I like to leave offerings for the ancestors to encourage them to come through and to say thank you for all the love and the wisdom that you share with us. Crystals are another nice thing that people often like to share with their ancestors on altars. I have a couple of crystals I'm going to use today and also other things like shells or beautiful stones that you've collected can be another nice way of decorating your altar. And personal items, if you have any personal items, perhaps something you've inherited from an ancestor that reminds you of them, that make you feel connected to them in some way. So now we are ready to begin creating the ancestor altar. And I'm going to begin by placing the flowers. And then these flowers that I'm bringing into the space are lilies and they are my grandparents' favorite flowers. We absolutely love lilies and they smell divine as well. So it's another nice way of using scent to purify the space and invite in the connection to our ancestors. Smell is a really powerful way to remember. There's only one nerve that goes from our nose into the limbic system in the, in the brain at the frontal lobe. And that's why we have such powerful memories associated with scent. So even just smelling the lilies, I'm remembering my ancestors already. And I'm going to bring in some candles. Now these candles are black. Now there is a lot of... Uh, yeah, there's stories around the colour black as to whether it's a good thing or a bad thing. Some people think of black as a colour that we might use to invoke dark magic. I like to tune into the story of the Mexican uh, lineage, which is that black is about uh, creating uh, balance and the death of all negativity. And so we're celebrating negative vibes leaving our space. And we're also, black is a familiar colour for those who are grieving. We often wear black when we're grieving for our ancestors. So for me, it feels like a really appropriate colour to use on an altar. However, whatever your beliefs are, then follow your beliefs if you have a particular colour candle that you would prefer to work with. And now we're going to bring in the photos. So when we talk about ancestors, you might initially be thinking of people that are related to you, which is all well and good. However, you may not wish to connect to people in your family, your direct birth family, uh, or maybe you're adopted, so you don't have a direct birth family. I would invite you to 
tune into your ancestors as anybody that has lived before you. So you may wish to invite in somebody that you respect, uh, somebody who was very wise, someone like Einstein or someone who was very creative like Picasso, who's a bit cheeky and uh, someone who could make you laugh. It might be someone who was a mentor to you or also we can invoke our animal friends that we've had as part of our family. And so I've my first picture going up is an animal friend. And this is a little cat that I once had. He didn't last very long. He died quite young. And so he he's called Little Buddha. And Little Buddha was uh, one of the loves of my life. He was an absolutely adorable cat and I miss him. Uh, then I have a collection of beautiful female ancestors in this photo. My grandma, my great grandma, and my auntie in that photo, and my mum as well, and a couple of cousins. So some of these people are actually still alive, but I don't have a photo of them separately. So I'm using this photo to represent them. And I have a mentor in this photo. This is a mentor of mine from when I was training to be a herbalist. And he is, uh, he was called Christopher Headley, and he was a lovely man that really helped me to step into my power and believe in myself as a herbalist, as I was evolving and learning the path. Then I have a picture of my granddad, who is over 100 now, in if he was actually alive, but he's passed over. And then also a dog from my childhood. This is Jess, my dog. So we have a collection of my ancestors, animal friends, here and you could add whoever you want and this is just a small selection but we could add a lot more photographs if we wanted to going way way back and you might even want to study your family tree and see who else you can weave in to this pictorial display. Now I'm going to bring in some crystals I've got a lovely piece of selenite I always think of selenite as a, a crystal that helps me connect to past lives and this will help me to connect with my ancestors in that way and I have this is not a crystal but it's a beautiful globe with flowers and bees and my grandfather was a keen gardener and Christopher Headley was a herbalist so I want to represent their love of nature with this globe and then the last thing I want to bring in here oh not quite the last actually I've got some incense which I'm bringing in the incense will purify the smell of the space although the flowers are doing a marvellous job all by themselves. So we can add some incense in. And then I'm going to bring in some offerings for everybody to welcome them in to the space. We want to encourage them to come like they're guests at a party. And so we have some rum for my grandparents because they loved a drink. And a couple of cigarettes as well for them because they loved to smoke. And we have some chocolate, because we always used to get them chocolate for birthdays and Christmas, which of course they used to share with us a lot as kids. That's great, we can leave that there and we will be sharing it with them later as well. And last of all, I've got a little sprig of rosemary. Rosemary is the herb of remembrance. Rosemary helps us to connect to our ancestors and remember them. Okay, and also that's helping me to connect to Christopher Headley who taught me a lot about herbs on her herb walks we went on. So now we've set up our beautiful altar and then we need to do a little bit of daily maintenance with our altar. If This is optional of course. I'm going to be working with my altar over the season of October. October or the month of October. October is the month where we notice the veil is getting thinner and that we can start to connect with our ancestors with more ease and particularly at the very end and the beginning of November where we have Halloween, we have the Day of the Dead and the Mexican belief is that the ancestors come for a party for the last day of October, the first day of November and then on November the 2nd they go back home again into the spirit realm. So I'll be tuning in to my ancestors over this entire month. So I'll be doing daily maintenance on this altar over the month. And then after that, I might shift my practice into a easier way. So I'm not necessarily working on it quite as hard. And so we're gonna light the candles. And these candles will burn down 
and they're not going to last an entire day. You might want to leave a candle going permanently over the entire cycle that you're working with your altar. So you might want to get a nice big pillar candle to do that and make sure that you are safe and protected. So if you do need a big pillar candle, just making sure that it's on something which will hold space for it if it melts, so it's not gonna leak wax everywhere and you're not gonna set fire to your tablecloth if you're using a tablecloth. The incense as well, we might wanna light the incense to purify the space. And again, you could light more incense on a daily basis. And just making sure as well that your incense is secure so that it can't, if you are leaving your altar alone, then you're not leaving something which could set fire to the space. You don't want to become an ancestor yourself. Okay, the uh, other ways I like to work with my altar is to decorate it in a seasonal way. So if it's Christmas, I might put some Christmas decorations up. If it's Halloween, which it is soon, then I will start to put other objects on here as well. We might put some pumpkins or other kind of seasonal items on here to welcome them for the seasonal party. And also it is my grandfather's birthday in November. And so in November, I will be celebrating him specifically and laying offerings to him. You can even bring in a birthday card, something like that to say happy birthday, if that resonates. I also like to sit and meditate with my ancestor altar through this particular time of year and you can do this as often as you want to. If you sit and meditate with them and invite them to communicate with you and just notice any thoughts or feelings that come through. And I will also uh, have a offering for you of a meditation that you can do to connect in with your ancestors as a part of this ceremony work that we're doing together today. You might also want to connect in with your genealogy and do your research on who you're connected with to help you connect more deeply with your heritage, with your roots and discover where you're from. And then journaling. Journaling is another really lovely way to connect with your ancestors and notice the, reflect, the reflections that they're offering you, the stories that are coming through from them, the wisdom that they're sharing with you. And now my ancestors have given me many um, nudges on my journey through life. They have guided me, they have helped me to know what the next step in my journey might be. And I like to imagine that is because they are in the spirit realm and they can see like the eagles can see from a higher consciousness when they're looking down, flying high. They can see the whole landscape. So my ancestors are in the spirit realm. They're looking over the landscape of my life. They know where I've come from and they know where I'm going because they're out of time now. They don't have the same lineage, um, sorry, linear framework of time that we have while we're living in this physical realm. And so they might want to nudge me in a particular direction to take a particular path. And when I listen to their nudges, my life goes really, really smoothly, really well. It doesn't mean I don't have challenges, but it means that I am more abundant and I have better connections, more harmonious experiences in my life. So I, I do like to listen to my wise elders as much as I can, particularly if I make space then they and say, I'm gonna to listen to you now for a full month. And so please bring your wisdom in and help me to understand what I need to do for the next year. And I journal as well, and then I'll start to see synchronicities for the messages that are coming through for me. So in conclusion, we are creating our ancestor altars so that we can connect in a powerful way to the roots from where we came and to the memory of our ancestors and to the wisdom and the love and the guidance that is still available to us even though they've passed on and are living in the spirit realm now. And so whatever you're seeking, whether you're seeking advice, whether you're seeking comfort, whether you're seeking connection to your roots, then an ancestor altar can be a really wonderful way to create that for you. So I hope you will enjoy making your own ancestor altar. And if you'd like to share, send me some comments, send me a photo of what you've created so that I can enjoy your altars too. Thank you for joining me. <laughs>